Hello, so good to have you back again. My name is Chris Richter from ricochet.com.au. Hope you're going well with everything. I wanted to show you something else to do with the H5P plugin that you might have in your Moodle LMS. And one of those things with the H5P plugin that I had to do recently, or had to put together recently for a client was the branching scenarios. Now I hadn't used them a lot before. I had had a quick look, but then when I got in to have a bit more of an advanced look, I went, wow, this is actually really, really clever. So we're going to have a go at that. I'll show you how you can create a branching scenario using Catch5P and then how to put that into your Moodle platform. So first of all, I'm using Moodle 4.0. I'm uh, logged in as me and I don't have editing turned on yet, but that's okay. I'm on the dashboard. And I'm just going to go to more and content bank. You may have content bank already along here, but I've got it in more. Go to content bank and I'm just going to choose add. And the one we're looking for, as I said, is the branching scenario. So we just find branching scenario. Now, while that's loading, what does it do? The idea of a branching scenario is that you have a scenario with a heap of questions or a collection of questions and uh, you set the scenario first. People then go and answer some questions about that scenario, but those questions lead them to other parts of the scenario which leads them to more questions, which leads them to more parts of the scenario. So you can just keep branching it on and on and on. It seems like forever. I'm sure there is a limit, but I didn't attempt to go that far. So here we go, a new H5P interactive content. So no content has been added. This is our left menu. Now I'm just gonna jump straight and show you how to do it rather than waste time explaining what all these bits and pieces are. So all we need to do is to create content, drag the items from the left menu to the drop zone below. So that's our drop zone. I'm gonna start off just with some text. So I'm gonna drop that in here. And I'm just going to call this intro text because that's all we need to start with. And then in the text area, I'll just put in here introduction, um, scenario, information. So this is where you'd put in a whole heap of text about what the scenario is and then just choose done. So that's all we need to do, introduction scenario. The next part is our branching question because what we're gonna have is we have an introduction or a set the scene of what the scenario is. Then we go branching and to do that, we drag and drop that below in here. Uh, I'm just going to leave the title as it is. It, you can make that make sense to you. But for this, I'm just gonna have a question that says, what did you think? Oh no, what should you do? What should you do? And just for my reference, the correct answer is going to be uh, the first one. So if we go here, and when I say correct answer, I mean the answer that continues us on through the scenario is going to go there. So what we're gonna do is add in here, just answer, answer one, answer one, so you can see what this does. Answer two, add one more alternative, because we wanna have three answers in this one or three choices they can choose from, and we just go done. So that's it. So we've got our introductory scenario, we've got some choices that say, what should you do? And then you have the three things that they should do or you think they should choose from. And then we have our branches that they go to. Our correct one is the first one. So I'm gonna put some text after that. So we just grab the text, drop it below, and I'll just say, correct. Well done, and we can leave it at that as being the end of the scenario, and that's quite okay. So that's sort of the branching part. What I'm going to do with the next one is go text again, and in here I'll say not quite, or you know, that's not the best option. Then we go down to our branching options. In here, I'm going to choose jump to another branch, and where it says the branch I'm gonna to jump to, I'm going to choose the what should I do questions, because I want them to jump back to that spot again, back to where it says what should I do, so they can try again. I can put in some feedback, or a feedback title in here. Try again. Again, this is just some more text and information to help them explain them. Uh, you can put in additional feedback text as well if you like, that's fine, which is done. So that's that one. Grab one more from here. And I'll just say not quite. And we go down to our branching options. And again, we choose jump to another branch and we're jumping back to what should I do? And down here, put some feedback in. Uh, try again. Select done. So you can now see that we have in our branching scenario, if I just make that a bit bigger for you, we've now got our introduction scenario, three questions or a question with three options they can choose from. If they choose the first one, it's correct, well done. If they choose the second or third, it's not quite, try again. Let's have a look at this and see what it looks like. So we jump to preview. So it's called course at the moment. I'll show you how to change that too because that annoyed me that it said course and I want it to just be an activity. Start course. And there we've got an introduction scenario with a typo. We'll fix that later. We go proceed and it says, what should I do? 
and we have the three options I can choose from. Answer two, it says not quite. When you click proceed, it, it comes up with try again and proceed. Now that's because I put that writing in there, it says try again. So that's where you can put in extra information if you want. If you don't put that in there, that's okay. Even though it says it's required, if you don't put it in, it just skips this bit and jumps straight back to the questions. And we're back at our questions again. If we do answer three, not quite, we go proceed. It will do the same try again. So we can proceed and then we're back to our questions. If we choose answer one, which is the correct one, it says correct, well done. Choose proceed and it takes us to the end of the, in this case it says course, but we're at the end and that's all there is to a branching scenario. That's what you need to know. But for those that want to continue on and cover a few more interesting and useful things that I found when I was building them, continue on. If not, you're all good. You can go and start playing with it. So for those that want to keep playing, go back to edit. I'm just going to show you a couple of the things you can do. So we can go in and fix up the uh, issue that I had there where I did typo. So we click on the little cog beside it and go edit content. And we'll just fix that word up. Scenario. Now, if I jump back into here and I edit this one and I take out in the branching scenario, this bit of feedback that says, you know, that it's required, but sort of isn't. Take those out. I'll show you what that looks like when we go and use it. So just remind me to do that when we go back and re replay it again in a moment. But what you can do next is you can add another branching question under here, under this one, and we can put in our Question two, why am I typing so badly today? Question two, what are the three or two options? We can just do two this time. Option one, option two, the correct option this time we will make option two. And I'm only putting that in there just to help us remember that's what we did, but normally obviously wouldn't do that. You can see our branching is now continuing on as we go. So I'm just going to add in some text underneath answer one and say, not quite again, so they can jump back. Remember this time I go to the advanced branching steps and I go to jump to another branch. And this time I look through the list and I want to go to question two, because if they haven't got it correct, we just want to jump back to question two and that's it. Then for our last one, we can grab that and put that over here under this one and say, well done again. Select done, and now we have our ending sort of finishes there. And you can have multiple endings. So I could have this one as a different branch that continues on in a different direction, asking about different things. So there's always you can navigate through this, but let's just preview. Remember, we're going to change that course in a moment too. So we'll come back, start the course, introduction scenario, it's spelled correctly now, proceed. Now remember, answer one is the correct one. So we're going to go answer one. It says correct, well done. When we go proceed, it jumps straight to the question two or to this option two, which it has two options. If I choose the first one, it says not quite. When I click proceed, notice that other pop-up didn't appear. It just went straight back. So sometimes that's useful to do that. Option two, it says, well done, proceed. And we're at the end of the course and we're done. So back to edit. So you can see how that scenario now works. Really simple, very clever. One last thing I wanted to show you, and that is back in these options over here. In that cog over on the left, we have a start screen. This is where you can set the title and the course details. So that gives you an option to put in some details and image as well. So you can replace that image. And then all of the other bits and pieces under here. So I've got end screen, scoring option and behavior. So now if I just jump back to course title, I'm just going to call it the scenario title and scenario details just to help you see where that's going to appear. So title and details, we're going to preview that as well. Do we need to save that? I'm just going to go back to edit up here. I'm assuming it's saved. There we go. Scenario title is up there. Uh, there's no scenario details though. So where did that go? It disappeared on us. So I've got scenario title, scenario details. Then we go down to the next one. And this is the translations that go with it. So this is where we've got course. And in my case, I wanted to change this to start the scenario restart scenario because I didn't want to call it a course because that confuses the students. So it was scenario and that's all I need to change in there. So if I preview this now, we've got scenario, we've got scenario detail, which is the description. Then we have start the scenario, which is really what I wanted to have in there. So now I can go continue. That's where the title appears and stays up there the whole time. I can keep working through and answer these correctly. It continues with the scenario title up the top. And then option two was the correct one. Proceed. 
it finishes and then we have the restart scenario so that's back there just again where that was that was in translations and in scenario title so they're the other bits that i had to change to make it work for me after that we just proceed to save uh, i need to put a title in for this example example scenario it's actually called branching scenario isn't it so example branching scenario as the title then i can save it now that it's saved i can go back to my course where i'm going to put that in get into my content turn editing on down here there we go editing is on we're just going to add it underneath our other activities and we're looking for our h5p as we normally do we're just going to call it example branching scenario get in here to our files click on the icon there to go to the content bank jump back to system which is where we created our example branching scenario choose example branching scenario select and save and display and now we have our example branching scenario in our page with the scenario title details start the scenario and everything looks the same as what it did before and that's what you need to do so i hope you found that really really useful if you stuck all the way through the video good on you that's fantastic if you've got any other h5p questions that you'd like answered please put them in the comments and i'll do my best to follow them up and see what i can do to help you out otherwise my name is chris richter i'll talk to you again soon